Well, good evening, Bible friends. Welcome out to our online ministry of the Open Bible Baptist Church. And let's begin together with a word of prayer. Father, thank you tonight for this time we can open your word and be encouraged. We thank you, Father, for your truth and uh, that we can read, that we can grow, and that the Spirit of God can speak to our hearts as we yield ourselves to him. And so we pray, Father, that you would speak to us in a very special way tonight. We pray for each one that's tuning in in each home, each individual. And Lord, we know that we're faced with many trials and temptations here in this life. And we just thank you that you promise never to leave us nor forsake us. And that, Father, we can trust you each and every day. And so we ask, Father, that you would again minister grace to us tonight. And Lord, we thank you for the throne room of grace that we can come. And Father, we can find grace to help in time of need. Father, it is an hour of need. We're, there are so many needs among our people and among those that we love. We thank you for the, the meeting. The greatest of all needs is the need for salvation in the Lord Jesus. We thank you for what he accomplished for us on the cross, that he died, was buried, and rose again victorious. We thank you that we serve a risen Savior today. And Lord, we pray that you would bless your word now and encourage our hearts, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to invite you to take your Bibles, please, and turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and I appreciate your prayers. I uh, have been getting over a bit of a cold. I certainly don't have my singing voice on tonight, uh, but I would like to just share a few moments in the Word of God with you. And the theme that we have been looking at, and that is that the Lord desires to preserve us. He desires to help us, our body, our soul, and our spirit. It says in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this text has been one that has been an encouragement to us the last number of midweek meetings together as we've been focusing in on the Lord sanctifying us, that we're set apart onto him and that he wants to, he wants to impact every area of our lives. He wants to impact the side of us that we can see, but he wants to impact also the side of us that we cannot see, the side of us that we feel the side of us that hurts when the outward doesn't show hurt, but the inward is hurting. And that is, uh, we're so thankful for the power and the ministry of the Lord, that he, he not only sees our outward, but he looks on the inner heart. He looks upon the heart, where man looks on the outward appearance, but God is the one who looketh upon the heart. And so we're so thankful that the Holy Spirit speaks to us, encourages us, and helps us that the Lord would preserve us, body, our soul, spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're always reminded in that verse that Jesus said, I will come again. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And we've just uh, celebrated the resurrection. Jesus is alive. But he said to his disciples prior to his death that if I go away, I will come again. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And it's a matter of going, and it's also a matter of coming. Just as he's gone, so shall he come. As ye have seen Jesus go uh, into heaven, uh, so shall ye see him in like manner. Come. And so he is coming again. It tells us, and it, our, we are encouraged by that truth. We have been looking at then some aspects about the inner self, the inner man, the soul. We were talking about the soul that is contented in the Lord, the soul that is at peace in the Lord. And then we were noticing together the soul that is encouraged in the Lord. And we found that as they came into the promised land, and they crossed over the Jordan River, that river that opened and was as a, as a dry uh, ground for them to walk across. 
They witnessed the mighty hand of the Lord as the, the Israelites had witnessed the mighty hand of the Lord when they crossed over in the Red Sea. And they came, they came and they put those stones in the midst of the Jordan. And they put the stones on the other side uh, as a remembrance. And they said, now you're going to tell your children. What do these stones mean? Your children are going to say, you're going to tell them how God provided for you, how he led you, how he, he gave you guidance. And you say, this was a matter of remembering. And when we remember, we're encouraged. Remembering brings us encouragement. When we remember the good hand of our God, when uh, Nehemiah remembered how good God's hand was upon him, and how he rehearsed that to the people, it says that they strengthened their hands for that good work. They were ready and to move forward because they were encouraged in the Lord. When David was at Ziklag and, and the city was burned and their families were taken captive and they, the people wanted to stone him, he encouraged himself in the Lord. He remembered how God was faithful, how the Lord would never leave him, how he could cry out to the Lord even in the midst of his trouble. It says, and they wept until they had no more power to weep. And yet David was not alone. He cried out to the Lord. He found the Lord was faithful in his life. He remembered the Lord. And that brought him great encouragement. The Apostle Peter called the church to remember, to stir up, to be stirred up uh, by way of remembrance. And so we concluded with that last time in first in Second Peter chapter one in verse thirteen. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we were made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. You see, he talks about remembering. And boy, when he remembered, he was encouraged. He was encouraged. The Lord said he's going to come again. And he was encouraged. <coughs> That it wasn't fables, it wasn't uh, just made up stories that they have followed, but they have followed the Lord, they followed the risen king, they followed the one who they, his glory was revealed to them in the, in, the, in the holy mount. They were eyewitnesses of his majesty. And when we remember the Lord in our lives, we are eyewitnesses of his majesty. How he has opened doors. How he has given us strength to walk through those doors. We're eyewitnesses of his majesty. How he has saved us. How he's kept us. How he's secured our salvation. We're eyewitnesses of his majesty. And one day we're going to be eyewitnesses of his majesty when we behold him. When we see him, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. What an encouragement it is to our souls tonight. You know, we go through some various trials here in this life. But there's nothing that can ultimately overshadow the wonderful, glorious hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't know him tonight as your personal Savior, there's nothing more important than knowing for, shit, for sure that your sins are forgiven that the blood of Christ has been applied to your account, that you no longer stand condemned in your sins, but you stand as one who has been regenerated, reborn, born again by the Spirit of God, a new creation, a new child, a child of the King, the King of kings and Lord of lords, the one who is coming. And so we're so thankful, and we can be encouraged in him tonight. And I trust if you have never invited Jesus by faith alone to come into your heart and save your soul, you can do that this very night. 
I want to turn with you to turn with me to Psalm 103. Psalm 103. And I just want to be reminded of a, a beautiful Psalm of David, one that speaks words of encouragement to the soul. And <clears throat> I know I have referenced this Psalm a number of different times. It's one of my favorite Psalms. I have the whole the whole Psalms highlighted. And, uh, and uh, it's kind of one of those Psalms that, oh, that's a great verse. No, that's a great verse. And they're just beautiful verses. It's one of my favorite Psalms. And it says this. And you know, I believe it's one of my favorite Psalms because growing up, there was a gentleman in our church. You know, this is how an individual can be an example. He would often quote this psalm in his prayer. He would often stand, and the first words that would come out of his mouth, and he's home in glory now, but he would say this. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. He would exclaim with a psalm. Many times when he had opportunity to read the scriptures, he would read Psalm 103. And so I think that's why it became one of my favorite songs, psalms as a young child, because, or as an adult, because as a young child I heard it over and over again. You know, individuals, Christians can be an example and an encouragement to you. Maybe you know a Sunday school teacher or someone that was instrumental in your upbringing. I remember the same gentleman teaching me Bible verses in the children's club that I was in. And some of these verses were hard. He'd sit with me and try to go over the verses and break them up where the commas are and try to say them and then try to help me to understand what they mean. Why do we bless the Lord? O oh, my soul and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Why do we do that? Why did David do that? Because it says in verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And when as a Christian we face trials and we face difficulties, we need to remember the benefits of the Lord. The benefits of the Lord. What are his benefits? Verse 3, Who forgiveth all thine iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. This speaks of who he is, doesn't it? You find that word who. 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 Well, who is he? He is the one that has the power to forgive. He is able to forgive us, to cleanse us, to wash us from our sins in his own precious blood. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. Iniquity is another word for transgression. It's a word for sin. It reminds us that yes, our sins and our iniquities have weighed us down. We are sinners by nature. We are sinners by choice. We are Desperately wicked before a holy God. And he has the power and he has the authority as supreme ruler, as supreme king, as the supreme sacrifice to say forgiven. To say my righteousness imputed to your account. And that's what God does for each and every one of us. And we praise him for it. He forgives all of our iniquities and it brings encouragement to our souls doesn't it we're encouraged in the lord he doesn't just forgive but he heals who healeth all thy diseases what does that mean that means that he has the power to heal every disease every sickness every difficulty well we ask the question well why does why doesn't he why doesn't he heal all the sicknesses? Why doesn't he heal all the infirmities? There's so many people that are diseased and have so many sicknesses and weaknesses. It's, all, it's a sign of the, the curse upon this world. And yes, 
Jesus healed so many people when he was here, showing that he was the very divine son of God. But because he doesn't heal you or he doesn't heal me from a particular sickness, it doesn't mean a number of things. First of all, it doesn't mean that he doesn't care. It doesn't mean he doesn't care. Because the Apostle Paul had weaknesses, and the Lord told him that his grace was sufficient for him. You know what else it tells us? It also tells us that it doesn't mean we don't have enough faith. Because, because there's those that teach, well, you don't have enough faith, therefore you haven't been healed. Now, do you believe God can heal you? Yes, I certainly believe God is able to heal me. Do you believe it's God's will to heal you? Yeah, well, that's his will. And he is the one that can decide whether it's his will or it isn't his will. But you see, when we pass from this life into glory, there's complete healing. When our bodies are one day resurrected, there will be complete glorification. You see, he's going to heal us completely one way or another. Sometimes he chooses to heal in this life. Sometimes, and many times, he chooses that it will be when our eyes close in this life, our eyes open in glory. Immediately healed. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. One day our mortal bodies will be changed like unto his glorious body. And what a meeting in the air it's going to be when all of our diseases will be healed. And so he is the great healer. And yes, we can pray for healing. And yes, we can pray for others. The Lord would sustain them, that he would heal them in his will and in his time. See, he has a plan for each of us. We need to trust him. And then he says, what are, what are his benefits? We're encouraged in our souls because he forgives us and heals us, but he redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? What does that mean? It means just what it says. We were headed for destruction. We were headed on the broad road that leadeth to destruction, and he has redeemed us by his blood, by his mercy, by his grace. I have, you have, in the Lord Jesus and him alone, been redeemed. We have been redeemed from destruction. And how great a destruction it was, and how great a redemption he offers. Praise the Lord. We have been redeemed. We have been bought back. That's what the word redeemed speaks of. It speaks of being bought back. And the purchase price was the precious blood of the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And that is the purchase price. And we have been bought back. And what a glorious redemption we have in the Lord Jesus, who crowneth thee with loving kindness, and tender mercies. He not only redeems us from destruction, but he crowns us. What kind of ways in which he crowns us? Loving kindness, tender mercies. Oh, the Lord is slow to anger. He's gracious and he's merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy, it says in verse 8. And that crowning his loving kindness upon us, showered upon us. There shall be showers of blessing and tender mercies. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And that's the crowning that he places upon our lives today. We see the goodness of the Lord. We see his hand at work. We see him, we see him doing that which he's promised to do in preserving us, blameless, unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and he is the God that crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. And you know, 
as loving kindness and tender mercies that can then flow out of our lives and affect the lives of others because we know what his tender mercy and his loving kindness is like. We're then to reflect that. And that's where the body of Christ, we can fail sometimes in that area. But the Lord wants himself to shine in and through us and be a reflection of his glory. And he wants to do that in your life and in mine. And that encourages our soul. You know, the Christians are encouraged when other Christians are loving, show loving kindness toward them. When they have tender mercy shown toward them. Christians are encouraged. Then, notice with me, he satisfies our mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things? Oh, taste and see what that the Lord is good. Blessed are they that delighteth in him. He satisfieth my mouth. That mouth in the book of James is spoken of as one that is vile, one that is poisonous, one that is a fire of iniquity, a fire of hell. And he takes that mouth and he puts the pleasant things in. He puts the grapes. He puts the figs. He puts the Honey, he puts the milk, he satisfies our mouth with good things. So that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall walk and not be weary. They shall, they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. That's the Lord. That's the one we serve tonight. That's our king. Do we forget his benefits? Have we forgotten his benefits? Because the Bible tells us, in fact, the scriptures command us to forget not all his benefits. And David just begins to name a few. Forget not all of his benefits. We are showered with blessings. And as a Christian, that ought to encourage your soul, and it certainly encourages my soul, that we have the Lord with us. And I trust tonight that this few thoughts in the Word of God can just draw us closer to the Savior, the one who loved us and gave himself for us, the one who's coming again for us. Be encouraged in the Lord. Don't lose heart. Seek for cleansing where we have doubted. Find restoration and keep on moving forward with the Lord. He isn't finished with us yet. We're still here. He still has a purpose and a plan for you and for me. Let's be faithful till he comes. Let's bow together in prayer. Father, thank you for your word tonight. I thank you for the challenge to our hearts. I thank you that your benefits are overflowing. As the psalmist David also said, my cup runneth over. We praise you and thank you for what you're doing. We praise you and thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And we praise you and thank you for our wonderful redemption in the Lord Jesus. Help us not to forget your benefits, Lord. Forgive us for so many times when we have failed to remember and been encouraged in the Lord. May we be strengthened for the good work you have us to do. And we'll thank you for all you're doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I want to thank you for tuning in tonight. It's a blessing to open the Word of God with you. And we look forward to being together the next time, Lord willing. Take care, each one.